In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple acrylic box similar to this one. Now, the method I'm going to share with you is really straightforward and you can use it to make any shape or size of box. This one in particular is for my youngest daughter. She's got a little fish tank and she complains the big fish are eating the little ones. So <laughs> this is going to go on the inside of the tank. Little fish goes in here. It's got little holes in it so the water can circulate through this. And then when they are big enough, out they go into the big wide world. Let's quickly run through what you might need for a job like this. First of all, you need to be able to bond your acrylic. And for that, I would recommend something like Weld On Number 4. I've been using this stuff for years and it's great. Only problem is it's a little bit hard to find in Australia. So I'll link you to where I get this from, as well as some alternatives if you can't. Then you also need an applicator bottle to apply it. And typically these comes with a blunt needle like this. Not exactly my favorite method. I prefer using a syringe like this. Now these ones I get from my local pharmacy, really cheap, 80 cents or something like that. So I got a whole bunch of these. And I actually do cover both of these in detail. And I'll link to those in the description below and at the end of this video, both the tips and some pros and cons to using both of these. Something else you might need that comes in really handy is some masking tape. Now, as far as assembly goes, something like this is perfect. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. All you need is a flat surface and then a block of wood like this will do just to get that perfect 90 degree angle. And you'll see how we're gonna do that in a second. Now, in my wood workshop, I do have these squares and they work just as well. So that's what I'm gonna be using for this video. In terms of building a box similar to this, I'd say the most important thing to consider is the thickness of the material that you're gonna be using. So for example, let's say this box is 50 millimeters this way. Now, because this panel sits in between the front panel and the back panel, I need to subtract the thickness of both this panel and that panel to give me what that one needs to be. So if this is 50 millimeters, I need to subtract six millimeters for three millimeters this side, three millimeters that side. So that will become 44 millimeters. Likewise, if this is 70 millimeters from this point to there, I need to subtract the thickness of the bottom panel, which is three millimeters. So that will become 67 millimeters. To give you a better idea of how this all fits together, this is our back panel, obviously. Then we got our side panels here and this is the base panel right there. Now you can see this makes a nice 90 degree angle right there. And then this one just butts up into this corner right there. The front panel sits on top of this one and this one right here, as well as the base panel right there. And it just fits into place like this. The easiest way to cut acrylic like this, which has still got its backing on, is to use a utility knife like this. Now to do that safely, you're gonna need a steel ruler similar to this one, and that's gonna help you guide the blade and keep your fingers safe as well. Obviously, the very first step would be to mark out exactly where you're gonna make your cut. From there, it's as simple as placing your ruler onto those two marks, and then making sure you put enough downward pressure onto the ruler so it doesn't move while you're gonna make your cuts. Now, one thing to keep in mind is place your fingers well clear of the edge of the blade because you are going to put some pressure down onto the blade when you do the scoring. You don't want that to accidentally jump onto the ruler and cut off your fingers or something like that. Now, as far as cutting goes, you are not trying to actually cut straight through the acrylic. You're just going to score it. So typically, I would do about 15 to 20 score lines. The better defined that line is, the easier the next step is going to be. And that's typically what it's gonna look like. You can clearly see a score line running from one side to the other. From there, it's as easy as lining this line up with the edge of your table like this, making sure it is firmly held down with this hand, and then simply snap it off like that. The only downside I have with cutting acrylic this way is the fact that sometimes this break is not perfectly flat. 
It's not a big deal though. All you need is a sanding block or a sanding pad like this. Even normal sanding paper would do. And you just run that cut edge along the surface like this just a few times and that'll sort out that edge perfectly. Now let's take a quick look at what we are working with. So we got our two side pieces like this. We got a front piece, a backside and the bottom. So what we're going to do is pretty much just align them like this. And that's where these triangles or squares come in really handy because all we need to do is place them down like this and then align these two pieces like that. That way you got a perfect 90 degree angle and if I turn it sideways I'll show you what it looks like. Like that. And that's really the most important one that you need to get right because everything else references off of these, these two pieces and that 90 degree corner. So one tip with applying the weld on is you don't have to actually flood this joint. You just need to put a little bit down and it will spread by itself into this joint. After about 30 seconds or so, you can carefully move that and just turn it on its side. So now we've got our 90 degree angle done and we don't actually need these anymore. So the next piece simply slots in place like this. Now we can glue this up as well. And I would really recommend you take your time doing this else you make a mess of it like I've done here. And same here, we're gonna leave this to dry for about 30 or 40 seconds before we move on to the next side. The front of the box goes on like this, and to help me keep this in place before I glue it up, I like to use masking tape, and I just put little pieces on the sides like this, just to make sure everything lines up properly. For this front panel, I'll just start by gluing up the left side first, and then just applying a bit of pressure for a couple of seconds or so and then I'll switch over to the right side, glue that up, add some pressure for a few seconds and then repeat the same process for the bottom part as well. I would leave something like this to properly cure for 72 hours. Check out these two videos to see which one of these methods will work best for you and also don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.